I want to thank BJ for the outstanding introduction. Very much appreciate that. Now, th this is our last stop uh, on a trip where we've been talking about an all of the above energy strategy for America. A strategy where we produce more oil, produce more gas, but also produce more American biofuels and more fuel efficient cars, more solar power, more wind power, more power from the ocean, more clean and renewable energy. You know what I'm talking about here because this school is a national leader in developing new sources of energy and advanced vehicles that use a lot less energy. I just had a chance to take a tour of the Center for Automotive Research. Now, I, I admit the best part of it was seeing the Buckeye Bullet, which has gone over 300 miles an hour and is now shooting for 400 miles an hour. And I asked the guys who were helping design this whether uh, mom was going to let them actually test drive this thing, and the answer was no. <laughs> Only professional drivers are permitted. Uh, but for anybody who's not familiar with this, uh, the Buckeye Bullet is the fastest electric car in the world. <laughs> I don't know who's going to need to go that fast. Uh, but. It is a testament to the ingenuity here in Ohio State and what is essential to American leadership when it comes to energy. Our brain power. You know, I, I will say though, when Malia gets her license in a few years, she will not be allowed to go 300 miles an hour. Now, now, one of the reasons that I've been talking so much about fuel efficient cars and new sources of energy is obviously because we're seeing another spike in gas prices right now. And that's tough on folks. You know, I, I remember when I was a student, filling up was always tough. And gas prices are putting a pr pressure not just on students, but on a lot of families all, all across Ohio, all across the country. Whether you're trying to get to school, go to work, go grocery shopping, dropping off your kids, you've got to be able to fill up that gas tank. Right now, for most people, you don't have a choice. So when prices spike, that tax hike feels like a, or that, that gas spike feels like a tax hike coming right out of your pocket. That's part of the reason that we passed a payroll tax cut at the beginning of this year, so that the average American would get an extra $40 every paycheck and help offset the price of gas. So that's going to offer some relief. But the bigger question is, how do we make sure that these spikes in gas prices don't keep on happening because we've seen this movie before. This happens just about every year. This happened this time last year. Gas prices were even higher in the spring and summer of 2008. It has been going on for years, for decades. And every time prices start to go up, especially during election, politicians, they start dusting off their three-point plan for $2 gas. <laughs> although, although this year they decided it was going to be 250. This year they decided it was going to be 250. Now, I don't know where they picked that number, 250. Because it could have been 240, I guess. They could have said 210. They, they could have said 50 cents again. But they all made the same promise. They head down to the gas station, and they make sure a few cameras are following them, and then they tell you how we're going to have cheap gas forever if you just vote for them. And it has been the same script for 30 years. The same thing. It has been like a bad rerun. And when you ask them, what specifically is your service? I'm here to speak to these folks. Right. Right. So, this is courtesy 
they have to take the book, but don't interrupt everybody else.
great progress. After decades of inaction, we raised fuel economy standards so that by the middle of the next decade, our cars will average nearly 55 miles per gallon, almost double what we have. That means you'll be able to fill up your car every two weeks instead of every week. You like that? That will save the average family about $8,000 at the pump over the life of a car, which is real money. To use even less oil, we're going to have to keep investing in clean, renewable, homegrown biofuels. And already we're using these biofuels to power everything from city buses to UPS trucks, even to Navy ships. And the more we rely on these homegrown fuels, the less oil we buy from other countries, and the more jobs we create right here in America. We also need, we also need to keep investing in clean energy like wind power and solar power. I just, I just visited the biggest, I just visited the biggest American solar plant of its kind in Bowler City, Nevada. It's powering thousands of homes and put hundreds of local people at work. There are thousands of companies like that all across America. And today, thousands of Americans have jobs because of public investments that have nearly doubled the use of clean energy in this country. And as, as long as I'm president, we are going to keep on making those investments. I am not going to see the wind and solar and advanced battery industries to countries like China and Germany that are making those investments. I want those technologies developed and manufactured here in Ohio. Here's a statistic I want everybody to remember. Since I took office, America's dependence on foreign oil has gone down every single year. In 2010, our oil dependence was under 50% for the first time in 13 years. Even as the economy was growing, we've made progress in reducing the amount of oil that we have to import because we're being smarter. We're doing things better. But now we've got a choice. We can keep moving in that direction. We can keep developing new energy and new technology that uses less oil. Or we can listen to these folks who actually believe that the only thing we can do is drill our way out of this problem. In fact, they make fun of clean energy. They, 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 they call the jobs produced by, by the phony jobs. They, they make jokes about it at the rallies. Lately, we've heard a lot of politicians, a lot of folks who are running for a certain office. <laughs> they shall go on name. Four more years! They dismiss wind power, they dismiss solar power. They make jokes about biofuels. I guess they like gas guzzlers because they're against raising fuel standards. I'm trying to get it down. Imagine if these guys had been around when Columbus set sail. They, they'd be. Charter members of the Flat Earth Society. <laughs> they, they, they don't ask uh, what we can do, they, they explain what we can't do and why we can't do it. And the point is, there will always be cynics, naysayers, who just want to keep on doing the same things the same way that we've always done. Well, that's true. They want to double down on the same ideas. They got us exactly into this mess that we've been in and we've been digging our way out of. It. That's not who we are as Americans. We've always succeeded. It's, we've always succeeded because we refuse to stand still. We put faith in the future. We are inventors, we are builders, we're makers of things. We're Thomas Edison and the Wright Brothers, Steve Jobs. By the way, the Wright Brothers were from Ohio. Yeah. 
but, but, but that's who we are. That, that's who we need to be right now. We can't be afraid of the future. You know, the, the flat earth crowd, they've got a different view. They, 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 they would rather give $4 billion in taxpayer subsidies to oil companies this year than to invest in clean energy. Four billion dollars to an industry that's making record profits because of what you're paying at gas station. Does anybody think that they need help? That they don't have enough incentive to drill for oil? Does anybody think that's a wise use of your tax dollars? No! We have been subsidizing oil companies for a century. That's long enough. It is time to stop the taxpayer giveaway to an industry that's rarely been more profitable and start making investments in a clean energy industry that has never been more promising. And when Congress votes on this, you guys should put some pressure on to tell them, do the right thing. Bet on our future, not on our past. the American people. They can pl place their bets on the energy of the past or place their bets on America's future, on American workers, American technology, American ingenuity, American-made energy. Our children. You know, they, they, uh, that's the choice we face. That's what's at stake right now. In Ohio, we know the direction that we've got to go in. Ending these oil subsidies won't bring gas prices down tomorrow. Even if we drilled every inch of America, that won't bring gas prices down tomorrow. But if we're tired of watching gas prices spike every single year, if we're tired of being caught in this position, knowing that China and India are growing, China had 10 million cars purchased in 2010 alone. You've got a billion people, two billion people out there who are interested in buying cars. Which means that unless we develop alternatives, oil prices are going to keep on going up. I don't, I don't want folks in the Middle East taking your money out of your pocket because we did not develop the kind of strategies that will sustain our future and our independence. So I need all of you guys to make your voices heard. Get on the phone, write an email, send a tweet. Let the members of Congress know where you stand. Tell them to do the right thing. Tell them that we can win this fight. Tell them, yes, we can. We can build an economy that lasts. We can make this another American century. We can remind the entire world just why it is the United States of America is the greatest nation on earth. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you.